From the early days of Mercury to the lunar adventures of Apollo, from the innovation of the space shuttle to the technological advancements of the International Space Station, NASA has enjoyed several successful human space flight programs for more than four decades. Mercury, America's first human space flight program, introduced the nation and the world to its first astronauts. Today, NASA conducts many experiments in space. This is a short explanation on the CSIS experiment conducted by Canadian astronaut Dr. Robert Thirsk. CSIS, which is spelled CCISS, -S, stands for Cardiovascular and Cerebrovascular Control on Return from the International Space Station. That's a long name for uh, an experiment. It is Canadian. It comes from the University of Waterloo. The lead scientist is Dr. Richard Hewson, and I had the privilege of being an astronaut subject while I was aboard the space station a few years ago for the CSIS experiment. One out of four astronauts returning from space flight experiences cardiovascular irregularities and some dizziness. Some even faint. This is a phenomenon that occurs usually just on the first day after return from space flight. The purpose of CSIS was to do measurements before and after flight of the control mechanisms for the heart, blood vessels, and float of the brain to see whether any changes occurred in astronauts and accounted for their susceptibility to dizziness. The adaptation of the heart and the blood vessels to space flight is complicated and it's not fully understood. But undoubtedly it has something to do with the fact that when astronauts first enter space and experience weightlessness, there's a headward redistribution of blood and other body fluids from the lower parts of the body up into the area of the chest, the neck, and the head. When Dr. Thirsk arrived in orbit, he discovered that he and his crewmates had rounded faces that appeared bloated and legs that looked thin. The conclusion to this phenomena was that it was the distribution of blood in a weightless environment. All of that is totally adapted to spaceflight. The body in its wisdom has rearranged the cardiovascular system for flight in space. The problem occurs when astronauts return to Earth. When astronauts return, the blood volume which has been located in the upper extremities now quickly redistributes to the lower extremities due to gravity. This results in reduced blood around the heart. That's why during the first uh, few hours back on Earth, some astronauts experience dizziness and some even faint because the cardiovascular system's ability to maintain blood pressure is not 100%. These types of experiments are conducted in the International Space Station. In my opinion, the International Space Station is one of the best facilities for doing research. It's the only facility that we have for doing weightlessness research. And it's a marvelous facility to do medical research. The CSIS experiment is well developed and intended to improve the health and well-being of astronauts in space. CSIS collected a lot of data before flight, during flight, and also after flight as well. So for instance, uh, during flight, there were several periods of time throughout my six months uh, in space where I donned um, medical sensors on my chest, on my fingers, on my wrist, on my waist, on my, on my ankles. And these sensors monitored my heart rate, they monitored my blood pressure, and also my activity level as, as well. 30 days before flight and a few days after flight, measurements were taken to determine if any irregularities were still prominent. The astronauts that participated in CSIS did one other interesting um, experiment as, as well. Uh, before and after flight, we inserted the lower parts of our body into a large sealed box or chamber. And uh, Dr. Hewson and his um, lab mates uh, placed a small vacuum inside that box. This box caused the astronauts' blood to redistribute down to the lower parts of their bodies, stressing their cardiovascular systems. This provided invaluable data on blood control mechanisms that they would experience when returning from space missions. When Dr. Thirsk returned from space, he experienced cold sweating, facial pallor, dizziness, and fatigue. I did not faint, but the doctors that were taking care of me on landing day were very worried about my blood pressure which was alarmingly low. The doctors gave Dr. Thirsk one liter of saline solution to increase his blood pressure into normal ranges. So that was very helpful and 24 hours later I felt uh, much better when I was standing up and uh, all the symptoms of uh, dizziness had disappeared. 
The applications of the CSIS experiment is very important to understanding the symptoms of low blood pressure and regular people who may have neurological disorders, suffer from lack of exercise, have been on long bed rest, or suffering symptoms due to aging. Just like many other studies have told us before, it's really important for humans to keep active. Astronauts exercise for two hours every day on orbit in order to maintain our cardiovascular fitness, and that works great for our activities on orbit. Uh, and it's a message that we need to transmit to people on Earth as well. The cardiovascular fitness depends on how much exercise we do every day and how much uh, daily activity we see. The exploration of space is not without its risk, and NASA has unfortunately had to deal with accidents. There have been two accidents uh, involving the space sh shuttle so far. We lost some, some really good friends. One of those accidents occurred uh, during uh, re-entry. It had nothing to do with the physical state of the astronauts. It was an imperfection in the, um, in the outer covering of, of the space shuttle. Imagine that the commander or the pilot who is steering the, the shuttle or the spacecraft home suddenly feels dizzy as the, the G-forces begin to come on during, uh, during re-entry. So you cannot have a dizzy astronaut flying the shuttle back home. The main problem with uh, blood pressure after flight is that the blood pressure is low. So uh, what we're trying to do with uh, the results from the CSIS experiment in the future is come up with methods that we can increase the, the blood flow uh, and the blood pressure up to a normal pre-flight level, not to something that's excessively high, which could cause other diseases like, like strokes or heart attacks, things like that but just bring the, the post-flight blood pressure back up to a normal pre-flight level. We want to understand how the cardiovascular system works so that we can protect astronauts of the future. Astronauts, perhaps, like uh, some of the people watching this video, who will fly not for six months in space, but for two and a half years in space, perhaps on a mission to Mars.